Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Yomi. Abu Dazar Daf Mem, we begin on Lamet Tessam at Bays, three lines off the bottom of the Amit. Vitara Shein Trufa. So as we just learned in the Mishnah, if it's a turret, a small, you know, small-sized fish which has not been mashed, so you can still identify the fish by its, uh, you know, kosher size. You can still tell. Uh, in that case, you can have it from the guy. Tanur uh, What level of uh, discernibility is required? Tanur Rabbanon. Ezohi turret shein trufa. What's considered a fish which has not been, um, you know, cut up, mashed? Kol Sharoish Vishidra Nikar. So you still must be able to identify its uh, its head. Uh, so if it's a, a more of a flattish, roundish type of head, then you know it's a kosher fish because if it's non kosher, it would be more pointy. So that the Roish, the head, and the Shadra, the, the spine, more specifically the spinal cord, which is unique to only kosher fish. So you can tell uh, it still has the uh, Roish, the Shadra, Nikar. Uh, you can still tell these two um, identifying features, and uh, in which case you're still uh, you're safe. The Mishnah continued that uh, you can also uh, consume brine, fish brine, which has in it a dogo, a little fishy. Uh, in which case you know that because uh, this type of creature, which actually happens to be a non-kosher creature, happens to develop. It grows within kosher fish brine. So if you buy the tzira, the fish brine from a guy, and you find within it this little mini creature, then you know you're safe. So uh, what exactly is this tzira that has the doga? Kosher kilvis achas. You have this little uh, doggy looking uh, uh, creature swimming around. So it's either one or shtei kilbis or two. Shaitata is a boy swimming around in this. Um, uh, on this uh, on this brine, and you know you're safe. Well, if one is enough, why why two? Hashta kilbis achas amras short. If you just uh, allowed me, even with one, stay kilbis me boy. Of course, uh, if it has two, why discuss two if one is sufficient? Like how should the answer is like this? Depends on the situation. Kan be psuchois, kan So if it's a closed barrel, closed container, and you open it up, oh, you find a little kilbis, you're good to go. But if it's open, then Rashi says it's not enough because perhaps this thing popped in from from the outside. It fell in. Uh, so in this case, you need to have two of them. It's like two them, two witnesses. In which case, you know, you say it's unlikely that both fell in from the outside, and uh, apparently it was self uh, self grown. In which case, it's kosher material. Itma. So back to this question of identifying this fish, Rafuna Amar. You need to tell both. You have to actually be able to identify the head and the shedra. So both signs only. Rav Nachman Amar, one or the other is enough. A reish, a shedra, one or the other would do the trick. So according to Rav Huna, it's not, you know, it's not enough to only have one. Perhaps, you know, you can mistake it for an ankoshif. So uh, you have to have both. Uh, to give you that confidence that you have it right. Masav Rav Ukvar Bar Chom. Why are we speaking about uh, heads and uh, <laughs> and uh, and cords? Uh, the uh, the pasuk and the uh, the Mishnayis, the Gemara speak about different types of uh, kosher signs on fish, fins and scales, right? Ubedagim. So what's the identifying sign of a kosher fish? Kolchiyesh by snapir. It has the fin, the kaskas, and the scales. Okay, so. Uh, it's fins and scales, not uh, heads and tails. A head and a, a, a tail and the shadra would, would suffice to identify. The, um, when we give us those two, uh, when we speak about those two signs of snapper cascases, it's the arrow fish, it's the palmuda fish. The damu rei shayu there, uh, you can't really identify it by way of its head because in those instances, those fish's heads are very similar looking to the non-kosher fish. So there, it's not going to provide positive identity until you have the fins and the scales. Amraf Yehudim Shmeidul. Mach, like, it's our, the whole discussion. Do you need the uh, Roish and the Shedra? 
or one or the other is enough. So meaning, the one that uh, is lenient and allows one of the two signs to suffice, that's only the table but if you're using the brine, you're dipping you know, your bread into the brine, uh, because brine, fish brine, isn't, according to Tosis, isn't really also in Torah. So even if it's non-kosher fish brine, it's it's not really, you know, an integral part of the fish. It's like zeya ba'alma, it's just like, you know, sweat, it's like uh, some sort of moisture, residual moisture. It's not, uh, it doesn't really contain the essence of the fish. It's only also mid So since it's also mid we allow, we, we allow ourselves to be more lenient, and we allow even one form of identity, one simon, to suffice. Aval begufan, but to consume the actual fish itself, which if it were not kosher, it would be asr minat teira. There, we need that double identity. All would agree asr achihei roish v'shedru nikar. There, it wouldn't be permitted unless you have both, uh, uh, you know, a positive identifying signs. Amr of zera. Mereish, initially, I didn't have this, uh, you know, this perspective, and I figured that. You know, this whole discussion pertains to the fish itself, but the tzir, well, the juice, the sauce, would be okay, according to all. All would agree it's okay with merely one identifying sign. Mereish, initially, have a, have a matbil now, would dip into the uh, bitzir, into the brine of this type of fish, um, with merely all, only one identifying sign, either the reish or the shedra, and that would be enough for me. But ki when the shaman alone. But once I heard this... Uh, Presentation, the Omar of Yehuda, Mishmed Ula, right? The aforementioned statement that um, it's the other way around. Machlekes the Tavol Betziron, the Machlekes, which means that the Ishita, that's Machmer, that requires two um, elements of, of, uh, of identity, that's with respect to the Tzir. So we're more lenient over there, and some say one is enough, some say two is enough. Aval Begufan, but with respect to the actual body of the fish itself, they very call us all agree it's. Not permitted, unless you have those two signs, the Rosh and the Shedra. So once I heard that, I decided to be more stringent, not to take a lenient route, and therefore, I would not even use the Tzir without both Simonim uh, um, to prove its, its Kashrus in accordance with the strict opinion. So what's the conclusion? That, uh, yeah, you need both simonim, achi, hei, roish, veshedra, nika, shakal achas, achas. If you want to partake in the fish or even the uh, brine or even the, uh, the juice, you have to firmly, positively identify each single a piece, each single fish that's there. Um, identify and uh, confirm that the head, that the uh, shedra, is in fact indicative of a kosher fish. Meisve, he comes a kasha on Rapapa, who required this double form of identity for each piece. So you have um, a guy who delivered some fish, chatichais, you have these uh, slices of fish. Sheesh ban simon, where you find some uh, simon of kashris, bein bekulam, bein mekzasen, whether it's on each piece or whether it's just on part of the uh, Slices. I feel even if you have a hundred slices and only one, only one exhibits kashras signs, that's good enough for everything. Kulam Batarais. Why? Because we assume that um, that uh, he wouldn't mix, you know, different types of fish. Uh, they, you know, they clash in terms of uh, taste and quality. So if uh, it's determined that one of them is kosher, one piece is kosher, you assume it's all the same type. In fact, there was a story, Umasa, by Vilke Chavno. There was a story about a guy, a certain guy, Shevi Garav Shachatichais, he brought this uh, big container full of uh, fish, uh, uh, slices of fish. And they found the proper simon on one slice. So what about the rest? Hitter, Rabon, Shimon, Megamlil, Es Hagarav Kuloi. He gave a heksha on the whole entire supply. Apparently, that is sufficient. Unlike Rapapa, who required that each piece be identified separately. Tergum Rapapa's Rapapa explained that here we're speaking about a unique case. Typically, you need to identify each piece independently. But here, 
they fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. You saw it was all, all one of the same fish. Here was the head, here was the mid, midsection, here was the tail section, and they fit together like a jigsaw. So in that case, you know, it's all one and the same supply. If one is good, so are the rest. If that's the case, my remember, why well, even discuss it? It's so obvious. Well, the Tamer perhaps I would think, you know what, maybe it chanced randomly that they all fit together, although they're really from separate sources. No, we're not concerned about that. Nechosh, perhaps we should be concerned. Dilma Estrami, perhaps he lucked out that they all look like they're part of the same team when they're really not. Kamash, one of the point is, we're not going to go that far with our, you know, concerns. How Arba, in fact, it was a story about a, a, a ship, a little ship, the Tzachanta, full of this Tzachanta fish, which incidentally is the Chilak and the Sultanis fish discussed yesterday, those many fish, that showed up, the Asi, to the town of Sichra, the Asi Sichra. Now, we know these fish do not feature um, kosher signs when they were young, although they're technically kosher because they will develop it later on, as we discussed the other day. But in the meantime, you have to confirm that, in fact, they are of the kosher species. So the Rav came out to check, Nafak, who went out, Rav Huna Barchidna, he took a close look, and he uh, noticed, V'chazah B'kalfi V'shari. He noticed some uh, scales lying around amongst the fish, and uh, that, uh, that was uh, a confirmation that, in fact, they were kosher. Amalei Rabbas, Rabbas wasn't uh, very happy. He says, you know, we're speaking about a port. Many fish come through here. The scales that you found could have been from these, could have been from others. I mean, unless you really are going to pick up each fish independently and identify it and confirm its conscious, how do you know just because you found some scales lying around? Amalei Rabbas, who would allow this type of situation? In a place where you find scales lying around. Nafak, Shipuri, the Rabbas, in fact, Rava. Um, made an announcement, so they had the uh, you know, they called out, they uh, made a, a declaration that in fact, Rava disallowed the use of this uh, shipment. Nafak Shipuri, the Rava Basar. So Rava's Shefaris went out, basically announced that it's, uh, it's banned. Oh, and then there was another announcement by uh, Rav Huna Barchina. Shipure de Rav Huna Barchina. So then came out the next announcement, the name of the other Rav, Rav Huna Barchina. Vishari, who allowed it? So we're sort of stuck. Amar of Yerim Yomidifti. So he said like this. Ledidi Amar li Rapapi. Rapapi himself told me. He explained, me, explained to me the situation. Kishara Rav Huna Barchina. All the Rav Huna Barchina did permit, but... It was limited to the tzir, which is merely midrabonon, so uh, this limited form of identification sufficed. But tzir, aval begufan but he never allowed consumption of the actual fish, which would be also minatoyer if not kosh. Amar Ravashi, lididi amali ar papa or a puppy. I had a different uh, version from a puppy. Kishara, Rafun barchina, when Rafun barchina allowed it, all the way. Afilu begufan, he allowed it even uh, regarding the actual fish itself. Concludes them. Um, Ravashi. And now we're sort of uh, in limbo. Vano, my personal opinion is, I'm not going to uh, ban it. Because our puppy told me that uh, it was okay. No, I'm not going to really permit it all the way. Because of that earlier statement, Rav Huna told us in the name of Ula, that with respect to the uh, consumption of the fish itself, you have to really have firm identification. You can't just make assumptions and draw parallels from one on the other. A sample uh, checking is not enough. The discussion earlier, how far you have to check, is only with respect to the tzir, which is more lenient, but the actual fish itself. All agree. One needs to identify the head, the spine of each single fish, each single slice. So we're sort of leaving it in limbo. I'm not going to proceed. I can't say yes. I can't say no. We're going to find ourselves uh, other fish. Yosef Rav Chinana Bar Idi. He was sitting coming in front of the Rav Adabar Rav. Yosef was coming and he was saying over. Ei haloch. Oivit kechavim. So a guy shows up with a shipment of uh, a fish uh, sauce. Oivit kechavim shehebi arreva. It brings a ship full of uh, melee of chavis full of barrels of uh, a brine of fish sauce. Okay, Venim says, Kilbis, I'm going to have to look out uh, 
to see if we find the little kilbis uh, creature swimming around, right? So you take a look at one barrel and you find Gavaldik Mazeltov and Imtse is Kilbis Bachas Men. You find a Kilbis contained in one of those barrels. Now, do we have to go check all barrels? Or can we just assume it's all from the same source, all the same material? So it depends. Psuchais. If they're uh, all uncovered, all the other barrels are uncovered. So in this case, even if you didn't find, you didn't notice this Kilbis. Anywhere else except for the first first barrel that you found, Kulam Taurus, they're all okay. Why? We assume that if you found the kilbis in this barrel, which is indicative of its kosher content, presumably the entire shipment contains the same material from the same source, and um, the absence of the kilbis amongst the other barrels. It's not going to really going to throw a wrench into our assumption because uh, we can just be, uh, we just assume, speculate that the kilbis hopped out because they were all open, unsealed. Stumais, however, if the rest of the barrels are closed, sealed, so nothing is jumping out, so the absence of the kilbis in the other ones raises a red flag on the other ones. Hemoteris. So the container that had the kilbis is okay, the kulan asuras, but the rest not. Amalisi responded, Manalacha. How would you know this? Uh, this halacha? Especially this point that uh, if they're all open, we can assume they had the kilbis and they jumped out. He says, Look, mitlasa uh, kroishmili. I heard it from three pesukim. <laughs> Meaning, Mirav, Shmuel, Rabbech, and three great people, Rav, Shmuel, Rabbech, and all told me this halacha. Rashi says, he called them psukim. Gimel chachamim gedoylem shem kedai lis machalim kalamikor. You can rely on them. They're as authoritative as the psukim. Basically, uh, this halacha is rooted in uh, you know great men. Okay, so that was the halach. Amarav Bruna Amarav. So we spoke about mashed fish, brine, fish sauce. What about kirvei dogim vuubaran? The innards, the kishkas, the uh, Testins of the fish, the fat, or the uh, the eggs, the, the they call roe, right? The, the eggs that you find. So, if you want to buy it, you have to buy it from an expert, a fish expert who can tell you with firmness, with confidence, that in fact, they come from kosher fish. Because there are many different varieties, different types, unless you know, uh, unless you know your stuff, you never know where it came from. So it has to be a mumcha. Person that knows, that's reliable. Rami Lai Ulo, he asked the question Rabbi Destoyed Min Beri. Min Dekoma Rav. Let's analyze Rav's halacha. He said that Kirve Dog and Vubaron ain Nikachan Elemen Amuchan. So these items, including the row, right, the eggs, you have to make sure it's from a kosher source and not from a non kosher fish. Machlal the dog Tommy Isli Uber, do you mean that a non kosher fish featured this type of egg, this row? But I mean, we have, a, we have a kasha from a, a brysa. Dog tummy mashritz. No, a, a non kosher fish. He bears his offspring alive. He doesn't lay eggs. Tire matel baits him. Only a kosher fish lays eggs. So where do you get eggs from a non kosher fish? Sami mikan ubaran. Okay. So he said, okay, we'll, uh, we'll erase or we'll delete ubaran because there's no issue regarding eggs. They're never sourced in non kosher fish. Only abzera. No. Don't, uh, not so fast. Loisismi, don't erase anything. Tarvayu, matile, beitzim, ninu. In reality, both varieties, kosher and non-kosher fish, both, <coughs> in fact, produce eggs. Only difference is, the, uh, the kosher fish lays the eggs, and then they develop into non-kosher fish. It happens all within the animal, and it, it bears it alive, right? So they come out alive. Elazemashrits bachutz, by the kosher fish, it develops outside of the fish. Vizemashus mifnim by the uh, non kosher fish, it develops inside. But in fact, you can find baits in from both fish. Asks the Gemara, why do we need a mumcha, big expert? You can figure it out yourself. It's relatively easy. Take a close look. You can identify what's kosher, what's not. Lamali mumcha, skip the mumcha. Live like Bissimon. Just take a look at the signs given to identify the kosher row. The sign, we have a brysa, kisimoni baits in, kachsimoni dogim. The same um, 
Simon, the same signs. You used to identify eggs, you know, like bird eggs, fish eggs, chicken eggs, to indicate that they're of kosher variety. Kach Simoni Dogum, the same signs are applied to identifying fish. Fish? What do you mean? Simoni Dogum? Who's talking about fish here? Simoni Dogum, uh, it's already in the Torah. Fins and scales. What's got, to, what's got to do with eggs? Snapper because scales, let's see what Torah speaks about. Fins and the scales. Totally different way of identifying fish than eggs. Ella, rather, what we meant to say is like this. The Bryce is meant to compare the Kisimoni Beitzen, similar to the Simonim that you find by eggs, by regular eggs, Taximoni uberi dogim. Likewise, um, with respect to identifying, there are similar simonim used to identify uberi dogim. The, uh, the the fish eggs. Okay, so what are these uh, simonim? How would you know the eggs? Whether bird eggs or chicken eggs or fish eggs are in fact of the kosher variety. Beiloin simoni beitzim. These are the simonim that you should find on your eggs. Kol kederes. It has to be oblong, so sort of wide on one side and narrows as against the other side. Vagul goilus, and it's roundish as opposed to a squarish type. And more specifically, roisha echad kad. So when we speak about oblong, one side is wide, so to speak. Roisha echad kad. The other side is more pointy. It's like a kad, like a like a pitcher, which is sort of wide on bottom and arrows on top. So if that's what you find, then you're good. Then you know it's of the kosher variety. And that applies to large eggs, fish eggs, right? Then you know it's kosher. But if it's base rosheh chadon, if you find both sides pointy, or base rosheh chadon, or both sides wide, then you know it's tmei, it's non-kosher. Chalman bachotz. Chalman is the uh, yellowy uh, portion of the egg. So you find that on the outside, surrounding the white on the inside, the in the white, chalbain is like chalav, like milk, right? On the inside, bifnim, right? Which is in the reverse as of the um, opposite of the um, of the chicken eggs, right? So the yellow on the outside and the white on the inside, tomato, then you know it's not kosher. But if it's chalbain, bachutz, bifnim, the white on the outside, and the yellow on the outside, tar, then it's okay. Chalbain, bachalmain, muravin zabzai. What if it's mixed together, the white and the yellow, like a marble? So you base the and you know it's the egg laid by a, a non-kosher creature. Rashi brings, uh, for instance, tzav and lata, crocodiles, etc. So why is that important to know? He says because let's say it started forming inside and you touch it, then uh, you become tummy because it's a sheretz that uh, exports a tumor. In any case, let's just backtrack. We had a, we had an interesting halach. You buy these uh, kirve dogim. You buy um, fish innards, you buy, you buy um, raw eggs. Be careful to buy it only from a, an expert. Why an expert? Everybody could figure it out. We were just given, we were just provided with clear signs of what constitutes a kosher uh, kosher fish item, right? Oh, yeah, if it's still intact, you can tell, but that Allah was speaking where it was dissolved, was mashed up. Nothing to nothing to tell. You can't identify. So you have to buy from a reliable person, expert. Ask the Gemara Rab Destoyedman Beiri. Now earlier, Rab Destoyedman Beiri had suggested that we delete the Omar Samrin Bikan Ubran. So he had said that we should delete Ubaran because of that kasha that we had. Let's not discuss the uh, fish eggs in this context. So according to him, Batanya. Right? Because he said that the non-kosher fish doesn't really have this... Uh, Row. So, what about that brisa that clearly made reference to uh, the need to identify row in order to avoid encountering non-kosher row? So, uh, apparently, non-kosher fish have this uh, phenomenon. Ratanya, the brisa spoke about kisimone beitzim, kachsimone ubre dogim. Right. Same shape you meant to find by regular eggs, you should be finding by the uh, fish eggs, apparently, because there is something called uh, non kosher fish eggs. Says the Gemara, we have to tweak the brysa uh, and modify it. Lav terutse, If you recall, we had already um, tweaked the brysa a bit in order to uh, resolve one issue, right? So once you're tweaking it, tweak it a bit further. 
uh, to uh, put it in line with uh, Rabbi Destoy's opinion. Tretzachi. Kach simone kirve dogim. Oh. So the Bible says simply drawing a parallel between simone beitzim and simone kirve dogim. Just like uh, you can tell a chicken egg by its form, right? Oblong, etc. A similar. Uh, you want to find a similar configuration with kirve dogim, the innards of fish which are still intact. Vechmeshkachas b'simone kirve dogim. What do we find within the innards of a fish, within the intestines, within the stomach? Sheikad kad v'chad that there should be anything there that has this type of shape, oblong. Yeah, meshkachas la b'shil fucha. You have the uh, womb area of the of the female fish. Which has this type of shape. If you want to eat it, make sure that it's formed accordingly, that it's uh, oblong. That's all the Bryce was talking about, not about roe. So, again, if it's intact, whether the eggs, the uh, intestines, etc., just take a look at the, uh, the rules, at the uh, identifying signs given in the Gemara, you know where you're coming from. What if it's mashed and dissolved? The only way is to go and buy it from a mumcha. Now, let's say you don't have a mumcha. Ein sham im ein sham. Mumcha, my, what do we do if you don't have a, a mumcha who's uh, known to be an expert in fish? So somebody's selling you the fish, so what do you do? My, Amar, you do keep in the Amar. As long as he tells you, look, I personally, uh, you know, salted them. So I produced this uh, product. And I know that it came from kosher fish. I made it myself. And you can, you know, if he's a reliable, if he's an honest person, you can trust Right? We as a yid, the chasas kashras, we assume he's saying the truth. Mutar, Rav Nachman, Omar, that's not enough. Things are confusing when it comes to fish. You can't rely unless he tells you, look, he points to that fish, says, these are the fish where I took it from. Look, these are the carp fish and these are the kirveim, these are the innards and the. Uh... Then you know, you could. In fact, Rav Yehuda instructed to a local caterer. La'ada, his name was Ada Dail, he was a servant, he was a caterer, he prepared meals. And he says, Kivin the Omar, Nimo Lachtu Mutarn, all you need is that the seller should tell you, look, uh, I personally sold to them, I could tell you it came from kosher fish. So you trust this yid, and that's enough. Volashal Chiltis. Another item in the Mishnah which is permissible, if purchased from a guy, is an Olashal Chiltis, as opposed to the previous Mishnah where we discussed sliced Chiltis, which may have been sliced with a guy, non kosher knife. Here we're speaking about a leaf, which isn't really cut using any uh, utensils. Pshita, obviously, it's okay. I mean, if it's just a plain uh, leaf, what can be wrong? Lainisruch must be speaking of Lekart and Shaboy. Among the leaves, you find little slices, little slivers of this vegetable. Maldatim, perhaps I would think that uh, it was cut uh, with a utensil. Maldatim, Nechosh, Dilma, Maisi, Maerbe. Perhaps the guy took some uh, sliced chiltis and mixed it in here. Kamashman, the answer is no. The ha, we assume, we hope for the best. The ha is Taruki, it slid, it slipped. Shtaruki the Shtaruk that uh, it slid along, it, it got uh, sort of attached with the uh, leaves when it was pulled off the uh, plant. It's little, uh, you know, uh, slivers of that, of that vegetable, whatever it is, came along with it, but it wasn't really sliced by a guy with his non kosher utensils. Shtaruki got uh, dragged along, who the Shtaruk and came along with the leaves. Oh, Rashi says the ruki means like it slid, it slid from the from the leaves into the kli. He says umina olin lekli atzman ish the ruki nishmetu nishmetu. They got sort of slipped off the uh, leaves. Okay, whatever it is, it came along with the leaves and slipped into the uh, the kli, and that's why you found uh, some remnants, some uh, you know chiltis uh, uh, pieces along the leaves, among the leaves. Vezeisei gluskoi some gulgolim. So here we have the, um, the, the, the glob of uh, olives. Gluska is like a cake, right? Yeah, like a cake of olives. Hamagogolin, which are rather soft. So they're sitting in this container. And they appear uh, pretty moist. Officially, they're uh, just plain olives. Can you bite from a guy? No problem. We, we don't assume they were treated or sprayed with any wine. Pshita, well, of course, why would I think otherwise? Litzunich must be speaking, Afghad Rafi Tuba, they're very, really, really soft and mushy. Perhaps I would think they were treated with wine, Khamra, Ramawi, tossing some wine to enhance them. Kamashmon, the point is no. 
You know why they're so soft? Honey, these uh, olives, machmas mishcha hudurofa, because of their oil. That's oozing out of them. When they sit around for a while, uh, you know, lumped up, and they get warm, they get uh, moist, and it starts getting really soft. And that's all it is. No issue of kashras. Rabbi Yisrael is shlach and asur. He says, shlach would be a problem. What does that mean? If the uh, olives had reached the point of shlachen, you have a problem. What exactly is this? You grip the, uh, the olives and the, <laughs> the pit comes shooting out. So if it's soft enough that the pit actually slides out, then we have to assume, says Rabbi Yisrael, that in fact it wasn't a naturally occurring phenomenon. It was due to the uh, moisture came, coming about through that um, additive such as wine. Hachagavana boy. What about buying grasshoppers for personal consumption? So it depends. Tanur Rabban. Hachagavan. So you have grasshoppers. Vakafrisin. That comes from the slough plant. It's like a, a peel on the, on the fruit there. It's, it's basically edible, edible raw. Vakafleitois. This is leek. Haboy So even if the guy uh, sells it, even if he happened to. Um, um, she says the kafrisin were even cooked by a guy. There's no issue. Likewise with the kaflutois we had the other day. So cooked, there's no issue because they could be edible. They're edible raw, so the guy hadn't really accomplished much. So all these items are okay. Haboim no itzer. Now it depends where, oh, it depends where he's taking it from. He's bringing it from the storage. He wouldn't, he wouldn't add anything because it would spoil, it would shorten its, its shelf life. We can safely assume that it's just the, you know, the, uh, the actual product without any additives. Haboy mina oitzar, if it's coming from storage, mina heftek, that's also, you know, the, uh, the back room there, uh, a pile of, uh, you know, mina svino coming off the ship in large quantities, so you know it's, uh, it's just a plain item without any additives. Utarin. But, hanim karn bekatluza, or some say beslula, lufinei chanvani, oh, it's a different story if it's sitting, you know, on the, in the tray over there in front of the merchant, so it's... Uh, it's 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 up for sale right now in the, in the you know the grocery. Then uh, it's a good chance he may have enhanced it with some additives to give it you know a better better presentation. So then it's asur and you can't rely. You can't uh, you can't buy it. It may be laden with yain with stamyenum or other types of oh but make sure if you because chances are that he uh, sprayed some wine on top of these items. The chain likewise in a similar halacha we have yain tapuchen. Um, apple, apple juice, apple cider. Shall I the Sold by the guy. Is there a cautious concern? Shall we assume it's pure or or not? So again, it depends where it's coming from. If it's coming from the back room, from the storage, all that. Mutarn, you know it's pure without any uh, additives. Also, but if it's being sold there in the store, there's a concern because they tend to mix wine into this to enhance it. Uh, so if it's uh, slated for immediate sale, they're, uh, they're prone to uh, pour some other, uh, some wine or whatever into it. And then you have a kashrus concern. We have a story, Pamachas. It so happens that one time, Chash Rebbe, Rebbe HaKadosh, who uh, we know suffered many years from stomach ailments, as discussed in the Gemara, from Metziah, etc. So he had... A serious condition at that point, and he needed something to alleviate his pain. Chash Rabbi Bemeyav, he had an issue with his stomach. Omar, he says, Klum yesh Adam, and apparently they knew that this type of yain uh, tapuchem uh, can serve as a remedy, but he wasn't sure whether he can buy it from a guy. Omar, he says, Klum yesh Adam shiyadeh yain tapuchem shalabkichom asurai mutter. Anybody around who can tell me whether it's okay, it's permitted to buy yain tapuchem from a guy? So, in response to his question, Amr Lafanov, who got up and, 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 and responded? Rabbi Shmuel Rabbi Yaisi. He says, I'll tell you from my father, the great Rabbi Yaisi, from Machat, so it happens at one time. Chosh Abba, my own father, had discomfort, stomach, and they brought him this uh, real ancient apple cider of the, uh, from the Goyim. Shal Ayn Shana, 70 year old apple cider, really aged, and it did the trick. Vishasa and he had a drink and he felt better. Sure, apparently it's okay. 
to drink this type of material. Amalai, so Rebbe was a little bit irked. He says, Kalkach, You had all this information in your hands, and you waited until I had to ask and you know plead and why don't you just come, come tell me right away when you saw I was in discovery, I was in pain. You should have offered this information right away. About the Rebbe, you caused me to be in pain. In any case, they went and they looked around, Botku Motsu, and they discovered, in fact, there was a guy who was um, who had stored away this apple cider. And they found what they were looking for. This certain guy, he had this huge quantity, 300 garbe, these containers, apple cider, which was 80, uh, 70 years old. And they quickly took it, they got it, and they gave it to Rabbi Bishas and Nisrape, and he had it, and he felt better. Omar, ah, he exclaimed with gratitude to Hashem, look what Hashem had to arrange for me. All this uh, had to happen for me to have the... Um, Rafua, the guy had to decide 70 years ago to put it aside. All that was arranged and orchestrated so that a yid could have a Rafua, Baruch HaMak, and blessed Hashem Shemas, or Alam Hashem, that entrusted his world in the hands of Shemrim, of, of people to look after, to take care of it. Masha explains that, um, you know, basically the guy had to look after it for 70 years. Why? So that Rabbi HaKadosh should have enough from it. And uh, that's why Rebbe expressed his appreciation to Hashem for orchestrating all this in order to please him. Okay, Mechil Truma, one last item in the Mishnah is that uh, the same uh, pattern, the same type of formula applies to Truma. What does that mean? My Mechil Truma, Omar We're speaking about a Kayin who is less than trustworthy. Mechil Kayin HaChoshed. He's suspected of doing what? Limkar, Truma L'Shem Chulun. He tends to sell Truma, which he gets for free, pretending that it's Chulun. He doesn't tell his customers. He puts it out in the store and he sells it. So what happens? Well, it depends. Lafana Budos. So yeah, you can't buy stuff that's sitting out there because maybe it's really Truma. You can't trust him. Avalabamana Oitzra. Umana Heftik. Umana Slula Motaba. Whatever's sitting in the back room and the storage and the ship. He wouldn't risk that... Uh, Merchandise. He wouldn't play around with it because Irsusi Mirsis, he's certainly fearful to misrepresent that stuff because somebody figures, Shami bi Rabban, all I need is that the Rabban find out about my shenanigans, Umafsu Dulemi Nain, they'll confiscate the entire stock. I'm not going to take a risk. So, stuff that's sitting out there, worst case, I'll lose that, fine. But he wouldn't tinker with the stuff in the back, with the store, with, 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 you know, with the. But the oitzer that he has there, so uh, if he's taking it from the back and giving it to you, then you know it's kosher food. Okay, let's do a quick recap of today's daf. We spoke about the um, itzir, which can only be identified using the um, kilvis, this little creature jumping around, which is only found in kosher itzir, uh, in terms of identifying pieces or parts of uh, uh, fish or parts of fish. We have various opinions differentiating between the tzir and the fish itself. One simon, two simonim. We have the snapper because cases, but uh, not always, um, you know, do we, we need that. Uh, even if you can identify it by its head, by its uh, shedra, that would be sufficient if it's, uh, you know, fir- a firm and positive form of identity. We have the uh, kirve dogim, we have the ubre dogim. We have the simonim of the beitzim, how to tell a kosher egg from a non-kosher egg, right? The oblong, roundish, white on the outside, yellow on the inside. Uh, what types of fish products have to be uh, certified to make sure that, uh, in fact, they're sourced from the kosher uh, fish. We spoke about olish al spoke about moist olives being okay unless you have reason to believe otherwise. Um, chagoven, things purchased from a goy, um, make sure that it it's not laden with additives. Yain tapuchem, if we know that it's, uh, then in fact it was un, untampered with, it's just pure al- uh, you know, apple cider would be okay as well. I guess uh, it was not the derech to mix in, um, yeah, to mix in wine. I guess it would uh, spoil the uh, the apple cider. So again, that was uh, assumed to be uh, 
pure and natural. And uh, we discussed the Allah of the Kayin regarding trusting him, provided he has a deterrent um, against um, tampering and misrepresenting his product. Hadran Lach Ein Ma'amid, and Hashem tomorrow will continue with a new parak, parak, all the best to you, and much, much at